Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in. Welcome in. Appreciate you being here. I'm just checking one thing. I'll be right with you. How's everybody doing? Hopefully well. My flock is everywhere. Welcome in. Was first first in the chat. Then Cruise Vet. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Cruise Vet. Man, I don't know if, if you saw the uh, Embarkation Nation and, and Controversial Cruising pop up. Uh, I, it, man, it was a good show. I, I love I love talking cruising. I really do. And I just, I just get so excited when I when I, you know, see channels talking about cruising and, you know, the, the positives of, of cruising. Uh, Keisha, welcome in, my friend. I see Eddie Lugo made it in. Welcome in, my friend. Bone Tide Travelers. Hey, welcome in. Destination Fun. Thanks for being here. And listen to him. Latoya, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, just, just listening to, to people talk, uh, the cruising just gets me excited. And as Embarkation Nation said with um, Jennifer, as she said with Scott from Controversial Cruising, uh, he has like an infectious personality. And you can, you can just see the, like the, the love he has for, for cruising. And that's why I, I like, you know, I'm doing a show with him on uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time and uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I, I just have a great I have a great time uh, doing that with him. So, Scott, if you're out there, just know that I really enjoy it. And we're going to wait a few minutes and uh, let me make sure my shirt is OK. I am going to today. I'm gonna. It's gonna be a little, little different. I'm not gonna just talk about cruising. I'm gonna talk about um, what can be done to improve cruising from from a business point of view, from a passenger point of view, from a employee point of view. Well, I mean, what what can we do to make it a better experience for everybody? You know how they say, uh, uh, "Happy wife, happy life." Well, you know, happy passenger, happy crew, happy company, happy, uh, happy cruise. Life of uh, Chloe Nova, welcome in. The mustard drill, Scott, appreciate it. Thanks for being here. You guys brought up, uh, Jennifer, Embarkation Nation, you guys brought up um, Shipmate. I, I love the Shipmate app. I wanted to. I thought you could go on your computer on a on a desktop to bring it up, but I um I couldn't I couldn't find it. I couldn't find a way to log in. So it, was, it looks like just a mobile app. But just going back and looking at the old cruises, because uh, you made me start thinking about as far as what cruises have I been on and what cruises did I sell with people with, and really the only one that I can find is uh, I did Mardi Gras back in early 2022 and uh together we travel was on there along with see me traveling and i didn't i wasn't vlogging back then i didn't know them uh i just caught my i caught myself on on um together we travels video and he he did a little interview with see me traveling so it was just fun and i went back and looked at a couple of cruises to see whether or not i recognized any names and I, I didn't offhand. I, I'm gonna go through go through all of them uh, in a little bit. And mustard drill that is that is a good one, mustard drill. And that that was and again a lot a lot of what I'm talking about is going to be regarding carnival. Uh, most cruise lines are similar, so um, I would think you know they're 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 pretty close. And the 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 recommendations would be for most most cruise lines. She stole my thunder. Uh, appreciate you watch, watching while you're at work. Welcome in. Controversial Cruising. Hello, everybody. And I'm going to get ready to get in here in a little bit. If you haven't already done it, if you don't mind hitting the like button. Um, and also share me out if, if you don't mind. 
it's supposed to, you know, uh, help the channel grow and help the algorithm and all the other good stuff. I would appreciate it. I really, really do. All the regulars are in here. I appreciate you guys. I have, and, and I'm, after this, I'm going to promise I'm going to get to the topic. Don't worry. I'm going to get to the topic. And well, it might be two things. Um, th there's there's like three channels. I, I, I love all you guys. Alisa, welcome in. There's like there's like three channels that I really like. I mean, I, when I say I really like, I, I love watching them. I love like watching their content and things like that. She stole my thunder. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. A phantom donation. Nope, nope, nope. We're going to call you out. Thank you. She stole my thunder. I appreciate it. That means that means a lot. I appreciate it. You know, the, these these cruises don't pay for themselves <laughs> or, or equipment or things like that. But but anyway, I'm going to get back to it because I want to get to the topic. I'm going to try to just stay here for like an hour. Um, three channels. And. I don't embarkation nation. I think you're a moderator. I have to go look and see. Um, or just if you're in here, just type hashtag strong and it'll drop your link. But uh embarkation nation, destination fun, and controversial cruising. They put a joy for me back into cruising. I like watching all the other channels. Don't get me wrong, I like it. But when I hear them talk, I, I it, a smile comes on my face. Because I think we we a lot of us um, or the, the that little group right there, I think we kind of think the same. And when we talk, we 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 talk the same. And 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 I mean, it it really means a lot. Again, you know, uh, Eddie Lugo and and Mustard Drill and all the other channels in here. I really I appreciate you guys also, and I, I watch you. But when I see when I see them, I immediately kind of stop what I'm doing and go go check it out and just listen to them. I mean, I, I, you know, Scott, um, controversial cruising has a podcast and I can see myself driving and just listen to his, his podcast. Um, because I, I know the, the love that they have. So that, and also I'm, I'm looking, I was looking at my cruises October. I got the booze cruise coming up on the glory and the 23rd is the Jubilee. And in April, I have a lure of the seas, uh, September of next year, clock family, uh, Adventures group cruise on the Utopia. And then right after that, I go on Holland America. First time on that line, by the way. And um, it's a it's a Mediterranean cruise. I, I've never done that. So, uh, you know, those are like five cruises. I actually have the Venencia uh, booked for the April 15th of 2024. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. The, yeah, muscle drill, don't leave. I'm, I'm going to check to see. I, my, my plan is to get that one. I, it's booked, but I don't know if I can go. But uh, uh, again, and again, I have so again. I'm gonna go back to to the um, <laughs> the th the channels that I that I love. I mean, I love. But I, again, I like all the channels. I like I like talking cruising. Uh, I, I I like talking cruising all the time. So let's get, go ahead and get into the topic. And I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on mustard drill. He he, he hit one. Let me go back up here real quick and see if I can find it. Muscle drill, I think you're starting to show your age. Because this this it's been a while since I've seen this. But like when you used to fly in at the at the desk to check in, you know how that where you you go check in and get the um uh get the shuttle to take your your shuttle over to what's the name to the um to the port. They used to check your luggage in right there. So you didn't have to work. You would get to the port and go right get in line. You didn't have to drop your luggage off and deal with the porters. You just drop it off right there and that would be it. You you'd go ahead and get in line to, to get on the ship. So that is, I mean, that was looks like it would be a, 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 a real big convenience for the customer. You know, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I, I <laughs> I'm looking at some of this don't lose cruise list. You'll be lost. Save it in your computer. Oh no, yeah, I, I have it. I have I have it on my computer. I have it on and on shipmates. I have it. I have it everywhere. Um, but 
the checking in the luggage, it, I mean, it just made it so much easier. It just made it so much easier because you didn't have to worry about the luggage anymore. You just you were done. And that was like getting, getting off the airport. You you grab it from the from the. Um, the the turnstile, whatever you where you pick your luggage up at, gave it to Carnival and, and you didn't see until you, you know, you got to the room. So that that was a good one. Um, and, and an important one. One of the one of the things that and, and you know it's a it's it's a sensitive subject because you don't know what people are going through, but the improvement of the safety measures on a cruise ship. This this is like my number one, which I hope Carnival and all the other cruise lines. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them; they have systems in place to check for like if something falls overboard. But it's like it, it it's like it's not. It's almost like a video. It's almost like they have to. Somebody has to tell them, "Hey, somebody or something went overboard. Hey, let's go back and look at the video." I, I want, I just, I don't know the system and, I, you know, I'm sure they're not going to tell us, but to go in there and look to see if, if there's a way to detect as it occurs. So if, if somebody falls off overboard, you, you the ship is going at, at, you know, 15 to 20 knots. I mean, if it's five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, that ship it has gone, you know, a couple of miles down and, I don't know if you ever looked over over the edge of a ship and trying to spot something 12, you know, 12 decks down, 15 decks down, trying to spot something. It's almost impossible. So by the time the ship turns around, well, now, now we're in a half an hour, you know, 45 minutes. And how, how tough how tough is that to try to find somebody if it would happen, you know, almost instantaneously? I mean, maybe we can get a, a little better idea. And I mean, that's one of my things. I don't know what, again, I don't know the technology. I don't know if that's even feasible. Um, but but that's that's one of the main things uh, I, I would like to see done. She stole my thunder. Need to go on a cruise eventually one day. They really come to Montreal. Hey, you never know. I mean, you know, come up, Montreal, I think they have a river going through there. Come up through a river, man, you never know. And renew your passport. Do it. It takes a little while now with the pass. At least in the United States, uh, she sold my thunder. It takes a while for to renew your passport. So uh, get on that. And, and fly on, fly on down. You know, you're in Montreal. Fly to Vancouver, maybe. Do an Alaskan cruise. You never know. Fr Humphrey, welcome in, my friend. Welcome in. Yeah, a cruise vet. Cruise vet, I believe, was in the Navy, and it's it's. I mean, with the waves. And the brakes, it's it's so hard to spot somebody. So that's why if you ever, if you ever like see somebody go overboard, they have those those life rings, whatever they want to call them, throw, throw it out there. They may not be able to get to it, but it's like a marker. You know, you can mark the spot of about, about where to give them, a, you know, a, a chance to look for them. Um. The mustard drill, it's an infrared camera by FLIR, and it detects our, an object by heat sense, uh, signature. And it's supposed to alert the bridge, but I don't believe it works, or otherwise they know every time it happens. Yeah, see, Scott, that's what I, that's what I thought it was, something like that, where, where it's supposed to notify them immediately if something like that went over, and the, the heat signature makes sense. So now you know it's a body and not somebody just throwing a piece of furniture over. So that, that would make sense to me, but it just... I, it, it's like it, it just needs to be updated or, or you know improved and, and that's we're talking technology people it, it's there's improvements every day so i you know if, if they could somehow improve that i i man i would love it i would love it because uh, again you when you're on a cruise ship you never know what somebody's going through i mean you think everybody on a cruise ship is all happy and and you know uh, cheerful not not necessarily. You don't know what people are going through. So if you ever see somebody on a ship and they seem distraught, have a kind word for them and 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 you know talk to them if you can. You you never know what one kind word could do for somebody. Uncle Dave, you are never late. Thank you for coming in. That was my that was my question, Bill. Too, Bill. How can you get help quick the quickest? 
Um, I mean, just, you know, you start, hey, somebody, uh, you know, a uh, uh, man overboard, person overboard, um, yelling, try, you want to try to mark the spot, but yell that. And, you know, as you try to keep an eye on a person, other people can be going out, calling the bridge, calling uh, 911 on a phone, calling, you know, whatever, make, making the shout outs, making the notifications and uh, do your best to try to keep, you know, keep a visual on a, on the person. That's going to go into my, my next point. Which I, I'm, I mean, again, I, I, I'm a, I'm a little against this, but it, it may be where we're going to. That is making higher rails on the cruise ships, and I, for one, am not, I'm not for that. Uh, uh, rooted in essentials, welcome in. I, I'm really not for that. I think, I, I think it's really tough for somebody to go overboard right right now I, with the rails at, at the height that they're at i think it's really tough i think i mean you you got to get a, a head of steam to get over that if you're just walking uh, or if you um you know if you get pushed or or if you decide that you want to jump and play around and some people play around and, and on the rails and things like that would higher rails help could be i mean they they could help but again I, I I don't really think that's the answer because if somebody wanted to do themselves harm, they're going to find a way to do it anyway. And I don't, when I'm out there looking at the seas, when I'm out there looking at, I'm in Alaska looking at, at the, um, the fjords and, and the mountains and things like that. I, I don't want to look through glass. I mean, and now I'm getting kind of selfish maybe. Um, it's like uh, baseball. I don't know how many people like baseball. When you go to a baseball game, there's a chance a baseball might come into the stands. So back in my day, that was I kind of lived to go to a baseball game to try to get a baseball. So I would get like front, front row on the third base side or first base side, hoping to get a baseball. Uh, because people got hit with the baseball, they put these nets up you know, they, they put the nets up and it, to me, it takes away. I mean, you, can you still watch the game? You can, but it, it takes away a lot of the enjoyment that I, I knew as, you know, when I grew up as a kid trying to get a baseball. Uh, and that's, this is like third base side down here by the dugouts and things like that. And I just, I, I, I kind of miss those days and I understand for safety reasons they have to, but again, you know, there, there's a fine balance there somewhere. Uncle Dave, I don't think anyone accidentally falls uh, off a ship. They are just not designed like that. I don't believe that's and, and again, I kind of believe that too, but I, I don't know for a fact, so I won't I won't say that. Um, but again, I, I do believe that uh it, it, it takes a little bit of effort. I mean, it, you know, if you accidentally bump into a rail, you're going pretty fast. So if I'm if I'm running and running to hit a rail, maybe I could go over that way, maybe. CNS travels, welcome in. CNS travel, welcome in. Appreciate it being, appreciate you being here. So, I, you know, there, there was talk of, you know, maybe, hey, maybe cruise lines should go to uh, the higher rails. I don't think that was that would be a good answer. I mean, it might be a good answer for them, but I think it it, it takes away some of the cruising experience, at least for me. Uh, another thing that I would like to see cruise lines, and it, it, it's kind of twofold. I'm kind of looking at my notes over here. Um, more transparency. M more, more transparency. Uh, Uncle Dave. Hey, hey, I can still get a, I can still get a nice little slow jog up, Uncle Dave. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about a full sprint, but I can get, a, I can get a, I get a, I get my jog on. I, I do it a little bit. Um, transparency. And, and it's going to go, it's, this is kind of two parts. The first part is, give me one second. The first part is when you're booking, put all the fees up front. Stop with the hidden fees. Stop, stop with the port charges over here and gratuities over there and stop, stop with that. Make, make gratuities 
even though they wouldn't be gratuities, make that part of the fair. Uh, so to make sure that that the workers get their due. Um, I, I don't really like the idea of, of, and people do it for whatever reason. Maybe they had bad service on this cruise ship. I, I, I really never had bad service. I had, you know, an incident here, an incident there. I'm still tipping. Um, but you see a lot of people, uh, I hear of a lot of people removing the gratuities. Don't do that. Don't, don't even give them the opportunity. This is, this is part of the fair. They're going to get paid. So if you have a complaint, make the complaint, let them try to make it better. And if, if they need to give you onboard credit or something like that, let them do that. But don't take it out on, on your cabin steward. Don't take it out on the help in the kitchens. Don't uh, all the behind the scene, scene workers, uh, because you want to cut down uh, your expenses. You drank too much. You went to the casino too much. Just make it part of the fair so they get it up front. And the transparency on the side of the cruise cruise liners, keep us informed of what's going on at, 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 you know, at, as soon as possible. If you have to change itineraries, let, let us know. Um, if something happens on a cruise ship, kind of let us know. I mean, if you don't let us know, we're going to all speculate. I did a 23-day cruise from Seattle to Sydney. And we were delayed getting off the ship. And Carnival doesn't really tell you why. The police had to come on board. They, they don't tell us why, you know, what's what's going on. The, the speculation was there was a murder-suicide on that ship. There's a nice way you can inform the, you know, the passengers of what's going on. We don't need to know all the details. We don't need to know the cabin number. But let, let us know instead of us all getting together and, you know, chit-chatting, as Betty would say, uh, about what happened. Because, I mean, before you know it, I mean, the, my goodness, you know, Charles Manson was on the ship. He, he, he anywho, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but, but again, be, be more transparent. I mean, no, no safety issue. I mean, if it's a safety issue, I got it. Don't tell us. I mean, but again, um, just be a little more transparent. Bone, bone tired travel, uh, travelers, I agree. I'm, I think you're agreeing to about the uh, wages for or the, the hidden fees. Lisa agrees. Uncle Dave, I agree. I, and again, if if somebody does, you know, more, it might, you know, my cabin steward. A lot of times, um, you know, if they go above and beyond, yeah, give give them a little extra. But they they shouldn't be dependent upon tips. I mean, and and that's my opinion. I just include it in the fare. Don't let people take it off at the end. And and if 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 the gratuities was was keeping you from cruising. Maybe you should go on another cruise, wait and, and to, you know, get a few more dollars and go on that cruise. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, again, I, I, you know, take care. I'm take care of, of the workers. And my next point was making the ship more accessible for people with disabilities. They're doing a pretty good job. Carnival does a pretty good job. There are some ports where you have to use a water shuttle. And um, I do understand that, you know, some some can't accommodate wheelchairs and things like that. So, I you know, I do understand that. So I'm not I'm not going to, you know, harp on that. But again, like uh, Embarkation Day, I think Eddie Lugo, Eddie Lugo Studios, he, he's in here, said that they had and I don't know what cruise line, but they had like a dedicated ed elevator for like. Um, people with mobility devices to go on and they, they should do that because people, I mean, they're just aren't, they aren't very courteous. They, they aren't very courteous and they, they wind up, you know, knocking, uh, you know, knocking people to the side and the wheelchairs and the strollers and all this other good stuff. So somehow, and, and I, I don't, I don't know, I, in my head, I'm thinking like a, a bank of, uh, you know, a couple of elevators where they're dedicated for, you know, maybe, maybe two, uh, elevators at, in the center of the ship that are dedicated for, you know how they do it for luggage. They block it off for luggage during embarkation, block off two elevators for people that, um, 
uh, need a little more assistance. I mean, for us, you know, for people that don't need the assistance, you can walk from midship to the uh, after the ship or, or to the bow of the ship. It ain't gonna kill you. You know, I mean, I know. And again, people who've never cruised before probably don't know that. But if you if you turn right or turn left and just walk a little bit, you'll run to another bank of elevators. So uh, I, I think that's important. Eddie says NCL does on port days and disembarkation days. Yes. And I, I, I would, I'm not positive. I don't know if Carnival does it. I've never seen it. And I, I would think, you know, that would be like a standard practice. I, I would think that would be a standard practice. Uncle Dave, one thing I can't say is some pastors being rude to those in wheelchairs, scooters, and strollers, especially getting on the elevators. It's, it's, I mean, elevator etiquette is going out the window a lot of times. Sometimes people forget, you know, elevator door opens up, they rush to the front. But again, if you, if you rush to the front and you see people on elevator, elevator, back off, don't continue on. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, but that's a passenger thing. That's, that's one way we can make it better. That that's not up to Carnival or whatever cruise line to do it. Hmm. This is going to kind of pick up, piggyback off the transparency. Um, they really need to do something about the the conditions that the the workers work. I understand they're not from the United States and. The amount of money they're making is, is probably, you know, a ton of money from where they're coming from. That's no need to take advantage of people. You know, but, but if it costs us a little bit more, pay them a fair wage. If you if you ever want to hear a sad story, talk to somebody on a cruise ship of how they work and how many hours a day they work and how many days they have off. You wouldn't even believe it was possible to even do that. I was in a casino. Surprise, surprise. And I went to the to the cage and make a small change. You know, I, I had done all right at the, at the table and I'm cashing in some chips. So I'm talking to the young lady and she's up there and she's talking. And I'm like, well. You know, when's your next off day? She looks at the lady she's working with off day and she, they just start laughing. I'm like, well, what, I mean, what's so funny? We don't we don't get an off day. You know, we I work seven days a week. I work, you know, uh, 10 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm like, no, you got okay. You're you're on for three or six months. You got to get a day off. No, I'm like, wait. Th there's no like scheduled days off. And she said, no. How we get days off is when people compliment us on on our service, like through the survey. So when you get those surveys, people fill them out. You know, if you have somebody that that you know did some uh, quality uh, job for you in, in any area. I don't care what the area was, whether it's your housekeeping, whether it's in the casino, whether it's at the piano bar, wherever it, wh wherever, um, wherever you're at. If you have to take a picture of their badge and them and let them know, hey, you know, this person went out of their way for me. It, it, it's crazy. I, I, I say, uh, you know, Fr Humphrey, is it legal? Yeah, that's why the, the ships aren't registered in the United States. So, yeah, no, they're not going by um, they're not going by the, the rules of the United States. Elisa, I never heard of that. Talk, talk to them as far as their schedule. I, and I forgot where uh, one of the islands that I went to and I was talking to somebody in, on the Lido deck. They were busting, uh, busting the tables and just talking about, uh, you know, hey, are you going to be able to get off the off the ship? You know, do you have any time off or, or like after your shift? And the shift was like something crazy, like 6 a.m. to 10, 2, 2 p.m. to 5, and then 6 to 9. So it's like, I mean, I, I might be able to get off the ship, but it, again, I got to be back within an hour or so. And, I, and you would think that that stuff, I mean, it's like give them... Even if it's a 10 hour day, let them work a 10 hour day. And I know they may not need them all that time, but again, a 10 hour day to give them a chance to, whether it be get off the ship, to go relax, lay down and take a nap and relax without waiting on somebody. And, you know, give them a day off once a week where they don't have to wait on us making, you know, our crews the greatest. 
So, I mean, there's got to be some some way in there that we can, you know, charge me an extra $50, charge everybody extra $50 so you can give them a day off and hire more help. So that that's what it bothers me when I see people, because a lot of people don't talk to the crew and they don't understand what they go through. Um, you're yelling at fussing at somebody who's been working for the last three months with no time off, 10, 12 hours a day, and you're mad because you know your 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 dinner didn't come right away. You, you gotta put your you gotta put yourself in their shoes sometime. Uh let me go down to chat. Mike, uh you get to witness it soon enough. <laughs> Cruise vet. That's why it irritates me when I see other cruisers giving the crew a hard time. It, it bothers me to no end, cruise vet. It bothers me to no end. And I, I'll, I'll step in and I'll start saying something to them. And I let the you know the person know, um, you know, thank you. Thank you. All, you know, thanks for all that you do. Uncle Dave, just tip, uh, just a little tip on tipping staff. I usually get a couple of uh, international phone cards and give those out. Yes, they can call home but they have to pay for it. Uh, phone cards help them out. It, and it does. Phone cards, um, they, they still, they, you know, pay for internet. It's at a reduced rate, but, you know, they still pay for internet. And a lot of times they even like, you know, you always wonder like, man, they always seem kind of friendly in YouTube channels and stuff like that. As we go around with our cameras, I see for me, if I was working, I wouldn't want a camera in my face all the time. But a lot of times they really they really do want to know what your channel is so they can tell the people back home, hey, I was on such and such channel. Check me out. Which I think is cool. You know, I mean, it's like I, ne I never really thought about it like that, but they they um they can not not all of them now, not all of them, but they 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 appreciate it. Uh, I talked to the crew, but I have never heard that that they do crazy schedules. They usually mention when they have some time off. I I really I talked to a few and because I I'm, I'm like is is this normal, and it's like I come to find out that it is you know, and and this is Carnival so I don't know about other cruise lines but this was Carnival, so Carnival do better. Now this next one, I might I might lose a few people here. I, I might, I might lose, I might lose a few people here. I drink. I'm not an excessive drinker. But whenever I've ever had a problem with anybody on the cruise ship, whether it being like rowdy or arguing loud or all this other good stuff that ruins the cruise for most people, it comes from people over drinking. What can we do about that? Uh, but again, you know, the cruise lines, hey, buy my drink package, 15 drinks in a day. Hey, over here, unlimited drink package. You know, have as many drinks as you want. You don't see how that's going to be a problem down the road. And, th and this is for me. I mean, again, never been into a fight, but I've, I've seen a lot of people getting loud and you could tell they were all, they were drunk. Uh, uh, only saw one punch being thrown. It was a boyfriend, girlfriend, and the, the and both of them were drunk. The boyfriend got uh, uh, some other girl's email, and the girlfriend found out about it and came up and smacked him on a on a, on a cruise, drunk out their mind. So, as Alisa says, the drink package is not for everyone, and and I don't know. I mean, again, do, do is it a way to train the wait staff better? Is is it a way? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that one. Again, I can't drink 15 drinks a day for seven days. I might be able to do it for one day, but then the next day, all you would do is see me laying up on the Lido deck by the poolside because I wouldn't be able to do anything else. So, I mean, and I know other people, I, I know other people, um, uh, you know, could, could do it. And some people can handle it. So as somebody just said, uh, know, know your limits. But how, how, what do you do for people that don't know their limits? You know, what, what, what do you do? How, how, can you how can you improve on that? And I don't, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, hey, put limits on what people can drink. But to me, to, for me, if somebody said, you know, 15 drinks in one day, I would say that's a lot. 
I know a lot of people grab beers and you know they drink a lot of beers and things like that. But a lot of these are, are you know, this, these are hard alcohol. This is, mm, it's a tough one. Uh, Uncle Dave in Louisiana, all bartenders have to take a responsible, responsible uh, vendor course to recognize when people have had too much to drink. I, I want to say they probably do that on a cruise ship, but again, I don't know if I've ever heard that or I just assume that. You know, I don't I don't know. Again, I would hope I would hope that they um would have to do that. The bartenders are getting 18% tip. They may not be the best suited to limit. Well, uh, uh, again, you're right. I mean, hey, here's another drink. Well, well, that drink is $15. I just made another 18%. What's my incentive to cut them off? You, you know, so that that's a good point, Keisha. That that's a that's a good point. I, you know, I never, I never even thought about that, Keisha. That that's a that's a that's a real good point. Ex especially if the person is a is a good tipper. Good good point, Keisha. Thank you. I mean, now I'm, I'm about to rethink that whole thing again. Mm. And I'm gonna go into something that that's I I would find it beneficial, and it, it it may not be you know like if if you're talking a a, a three day cruise to the Bahamas, maybe not, maybe so, but these longer cruises, one one of the one of the things that I love about cruising is, is going to the different cultures and learning about different cultures. Um, you, you know, you go to Grand Turk, you go to Cozumel, Cozumel and, uh, you know, the Barbados, Bermuda. I like learning about the, the culture. And when I went on a, on my, uh, Trans-Pacific cruise, we would make stops in different islands. They would bring people from the island on board to show some of their, um, you know, festivals, some of their dances, some of the, and, and talk to you about their culture a little bit. I would love to see that more like down in the Caribbean. They, they're, there's just not enough of that. Usually. And again, I know a lot of people want to go down there. All they want to do is drink and go to the beach and, and things like that. But for me to, to better my experience, I would love like carnival. And, and again, I guess I you know, I could do it on my own to go out and experience the, some of that. But, you know, Carnival um, and they, they did it on the longer cruise was bring somebody on and and talk about the culture of wherever you're at. So, you know, if you you know, if you're going to Mexico and, and you know, a couple of stops in Mexico, well, you just one one maybe one day and just talk about the culture. And I mean, I would love to see that. I think that, that would better my experience, at least uh, on the cruise ships. Again, I'm getting older, so I can sit down and, and listen to people more than I did Um than before and jennifer's uh, jennifer says she agrees and they did for alaska and that's kind of where i got that from you know alaska they would have a naturalist on board to to tell you about the the wildlife that you're going to see they would they would tell you about um you know go for a walk and say hey there's a whale off the bow of the ship at one o'clock there's the there's a this there's a that and i i really love that and, and again they would have a, a show at eight seven eight o'clock in the morning where they would come come and tell you about what you're going to be able to see um, nature wise. And I just, I would like to see that expanded a little bit other than get off the port, go to the jewelry store over here, go to the jewelry store over there. That, I mean, usually that's what their talks are about, you know, stay in here, stay in the port, buy this, buy that, you know, tell me more about the culture. CNS travel. I have some, I have seen some of the bartenders cut off some people or make them drink a couple of bottles of water before they serve them another drink. Good. I've never seen that. And, but that's good. To, that's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, rooted. I like to learn about where I'm at. That would be nice. I, you know, I really enjoyed it. And again, I thought maybe it's because I was just getting old and that that's, why I, I loved it. But again, I, when I went to Alaska, they did it. And when I went to, on the 23 day uh, Trans-Pacific cruise, they did it. And a 22 day also. And I really enjoyed hearing the talks. 
about the different cultures that you're going to be in. They actually gave us, um, God, going to Hawaii, gave us like um, the local language. They gave us lessons on local language, on the words and things like that. I, I don't remember any of it, but again, they did offer it. I went there and it was fun. Now, they had somebody from the islands who who cruised for, you know, from, uh, let's say, Seattle to Honolulu. And, you know, every day they would have you know, new classes. And it, I mean, it was, it, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Oh, you, you almost need it in Alaska, Lisa. I mean, there's so much going on in Alaska cruise as far as like wildlife and the culture up there. You, you almost need it. Uh, Keisha, just take a look at Virgin, Elisa. They are about all inclusive, as I've seen. The cruise line will add additional costs for administering uh, those fees. Yeah, and again, the price seems higher, but in, in reality, by the time you add in all the fees, they're they're close to the same. Cruising on the high seas, Rob. Welcome in. I appreciate you being here. And if you get, if you're just stopping in and you haven't hit the like button, please go ahead and hit the like button for me. I really would appreciate it. It's supposed to help out with the algorithm. It would mean a lot to me. And if you don't mind sharing me out, maybe I can get drawing a couple of other people, another, uh, you know, two, three people from, uh, from your community. I'd really appreciate it. And when I say, and when I say about learning about the cultures, this is without an ad uh, additional fee. You know, I mean, I know you can take you can take excursions and they will teach you about it. But again, if you're cruising to this port, why not, you know, inform the people what's what's the culture is like on, on, the, on board? I mean, I know it's an added expense because now you got to, you know, have somebody on board. But again, I, I think that would just would would um, just benefit people and make the cruising experience better. Cruising, but I did the pyramid excursion in Belize and the chocolate and honey excursion in Cozumel and really enjoyed learning about the different cultures. I, I do. And again, as I said, you know, you, I, I don't want to pay 80, $90 to have to learn about the culture. It would be nice if they, you know, brought somebody on board. Give me one second. Yeah. It would be nice to, you know, do it without um, ha having to pay that extra. I, cruise vet i don't know if you heard but they they really they're telling belize you know like go people going to belize and haiti really don't you're not don't leave don't leave the port area i guess they're having some civil unrest over there and i think there's you know some gangs in belize and in haiti just civil unrest so if you're going to those places i i mean find out you know talk um the u.s state department issued a a, a do not visit those countries. Um, those ports probably will be okay, but again, it gets bad when when the U.S. government tells you don't visit. It gets eh, kind of bad out there. Eric B, welcome in. Uh, I, you came in earlier, and I forgot to I forgot to even say hi. Sorry about that. If I didn't say hi, cruising on the high seas, eighty six days till cruise day. But Rob, I can't wait to meet you down there. You did have to pay for it, and uh, you use onboard credit. Good for you. My f philosophy about travel is, as Lisa Lang says, the best education I ever received was through travel, and I gotta agree. I, I gotta agree, and that's why you know I always uh, tell everybody you, you gotta travel. You gotta get away from the United States. You gotta, uh, and, and again, people, when you get when you leave the United States. I know you love your country. Stop with wearing the American flag everywhere. Stop with, you know, all this patriotism. I know you love your country. Uh, United States haven't been hasn't been kind to a lot of different countries. So go down there, talk to the people, learn their culture, learn learn what they feel about the United States. Don't go down there expecting everybody to love you. They love you because you go down there and spend money a lot of places. But stop with the patriotism. I mean, and that's just me. I know Cruz Vet, who he's a vet, that's might, you know, might be different for, for Cruz Vet uh, if he wants to go down there. But again, even Cruz Vet, I would say 
be a tourist, you know, be a learner, learn about their culture. Um, but that that's a personal. Now we're, I mean, that's, we're going off off track of as far as making the cruise better. But I, 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 I you know, um, we we take our traditions everywhere we go, and it's not it's not like that everywhere. Everybody doesn't have the same traditions. They don't have the same beliefs. They don't have the so just learn learn their their beliefs. Uh, EF tra uh, tours is a really good uh, program for group travel. All is included, and only have to worry about dinner for these fourteen day trips. Bill, you may want to look them uh, look into them for your Nile River. I probably will. I probably will, Keisha. Uh, orange. Orange Cone, uh, if you think about it, the world is a book and those who do not travel really only, you know, only read a prayer or, or travel read only a page. It, they do. The, the world, the world, the world is, 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 a, is a large place and a lot of different pe uh, people, a lot of different cultures. My goodness, a lot of different languages. I mean, I go, I travel to Beijing and I'm expecting them to speak English. I travel to Madrid and I expect them to speak English. I wish I would have uh, studied harder in languages, like when I was in a junior high, middle school, and high school. Yeah, I, I mean, don't 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 chat USA USA. You know, I mean, again, you, you can't you do it. You can do whatever you want. It's just not. It's just not what I I do. I, I love learning about the different cultures, and I don't want to try to force my culture onto them. Karen, welcome in. Karen, I learned a lot from Karen. I, when I went over to Australia, she was kind enough to reach out to me. And she was, you know, just telling me about Australia. And I, I learned so much just talking to her. Uh, I, man, that, that was, I had so much fun. Uh, Cruz, yes, I don't advertise where I'm from. You never know who you might offend. Uh, although, as soon as I speak, they, they, you're right. Oh, no, definitely. When you speak, you, yeah, you, you give it away. Uh, Felicia, uh, I agree. Learn, love learning about the cultures. Yes, the point is you are not at home. Go and learn about the places. And I do. And and most people travel and all they want to do is go, which is fine. Go to a resort where all the, all the cruisers are and go back to the ship. That's fine. You know, you're flying on all-inclusive. You fly in, you get a bus to the all-inclusive, you never leave there. You go back to, you know, your room, then you go back to the airport. See, to me, that's, I mean, you're going to a different country, but again, you're are you really learning anything about a different country? You know, are, are, you're talking to people that are waiting on you. I mean, I guess they could tell you a little bit about it, but, you know, venture off a little bit. I'm not, don't go crazy. Don't go down dark alleys. They say, hey, I got a, I got a purse down here for sale real cheap. Don't, don't go down a dark alley with them. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Improving the adult areas on the cruise ships. Carnival has finally, finally started doing that. They had a, they had an adult area on a cruise ship. They didn't have a swimming pool in that area. And I mean, again, it's like, why would you have an adult area with, with no, no swimming pool and carnival with their Excel class ships, they actually have an adult area with a, with the swimming pool. Everybody doesn't want to be around kids. And I understand that. I mean, I, I, I get it, but improve the area where, where the adults can actually go there and not be around kids. And the way carnival has designed now, they, they need to start trying to figure out how to do that on other ships. Royal, they have an adult, Mm. They have an area, the solarium, I believe, but it's 16 and above. I, I would make it, I would go a step further, make it 18 and above to visit. I mean, 16, I mean, most 16 year olds are, are mm, pretty, you know, pretty mature, you know, I would say. But, but again, I would make it 18 and above uh, adults and, and leave it at that. You know, if you really want me, I would I would make it the drinking age. If it's if 21 is the drinking age on the ship, I would make it 21, you know, have have a nice bar there. So adults can go there and be adults and not be bothered with kids. Uh, 
Let's see what Orange Cone, Orange Cone says. When I travel, I don't go to see new landscapes. I go to see places with, with new eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I literally thought Alaska was the most beautiful place I've ever seen. I, I, I Bamanola, welcome in. I, Alaska was the most beautiful place I've ever seen. And then I went to the French Polynesian Islands, and I was literally blown away. I, I was Morea was the most beautiful beautiful place I've ever been in the world. Uh, tropical island, very friendly people. It's not over commercialized like like you know uh, most of these ports that we go to now are. It, it was the most beautiful place I've, I've ever been in my entire life. And I, I can't wait to go. I would I would fly back there. I think I have to fly into Tahiti to get there. But I would fly back in there to go up to Morea. It, it was that beautiful. Uh, let's see. Jennifer, I mentioned I love sea turtles in Belize one time. And they offered to, take, uh, to get me sea turtle soup. Ooh. I also realized we need to be more careful with how we say things since they have different... Uh, Law beliefs, they do. There's a, there's some countries, you know how we like our, our military fatigues. There's some countries where you're not allowed to wear fatigues. That's against the law. And which country? I don't wear fatigues, so I don't know the countries I'm fan. I want to say Jamaica might be one of them, but I'm not I'm not really sure. So yeah, yeah. I mean, again, do you have to do a little little research? Orange cone, looking forward to Alaska next year. You will love it. You will love it. It it it's going to be like your. You're like you're in a movie. It's not your typical cruise where you go to the beach and lay out on the beach and get some sun, but the sights that you will see will will stay with you for a lifetime. Guaranteed. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Alaska. I never heard anybody say it was too cold. Uh, even though it, it will rain sometimes, I've never heard people complain about the rain. I've never heard anybody complain about going to Alaska. I've heard about people complaining that they don't want to go to Alaska, but I've never heard anybody who went to Alaska come back and complain, oh, that was the worst cruise I ever went. I've never heard anybody say that about Alaska. Maldives, Maldives. I, I yes, I, I would imagine that's beautiful too. I've never been there, so I can't speak on it. I would imagine just looking at it that it would be, it, it would be amazing to be there. I, uh, that's yes, people get out and travel, and probably next week I, I'll be talking about that. As far as as my next my topic next week will be about, you know what I'm gonna hold off on that because some people in here might might steal my topic, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on it. Tune in next week for my my topic for next week. Uh, Cruz vet. I also respect the laws and customs of, of other countries. Yes, I, I do the best that I can, and I ask. I ask questions. Uh, some countries uh, they believe in tipping. Other country, Australia is one. They don't believe in tipping. They pay. They pay a fair fair wage. I offered a tip to somebody in in, in Australia. They said uh, we, we don't need that. We get we get paid a fair a fair wage, and it, it blew my mind. It's like you don't want, you don't want the money. It blew my mind. Spain was like that. Madrid, it was like you tipped, but it was like it was like the leftover change of a dollar. It wasn't like you know you gave them like twenty percent of the bill. It was like you know if if the bill was twenty dollars and fifty cents, well you left the fifty cents. It was it was totally different. It was totally different than than the United States. But that's around the world. Uh, places are places are different, and if you don't travel, you don't know. Jennifer, my grandmother would have offered you soup too. Keisha, that's one of my fears. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm a picky eater. But like, I, I want to go to Africa and I, I could imagine meet, meeting a family or something like that. And they offer you something to eat. And I know probably in a lot of customs, if you don't take that, th there's they get offended. So that that is one of my fears. Uh, Orange Cone, uh, Ross. Orange Cone is Ross. I have been to Arctic and inland Alaska, but never coastal. 
Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, and again, I I want to go. I, I usually go like in May, June. I want to go when it's a little little colder. Uh, when I went and you know it was sixty degrees, I actually want to go to Alaska when it's a little colder, just to see what it's like. Eddie, three mics in the chat. Bill is under <laughs> YouTube compliance. Yeah, we we have our fair share of mics in here today. Uncle Dave, I was stationed in Alaska for four years. It's beautiful. I, I mean, I, I've taken pictures in Alaska, and it doesn't do it justice. And very, very few places have I gone where I could say, eh, you know, it, it doesn't do it justice. It's, it's. I, I can't, I can't even, I, I can't. When I look, it was, it was better than that. It was prettier than that. I mean, Alaska took my breath away and I wanted to go to Norway because uh, views and cues, which is a, a YouTube channel, they went there and did a, a Norway tr uh, trip and Norway looked like Alaska on steroids. And I find that, I find that unbelievable. I, I find that unbelievable that it could be that, that beautiful there. So I want, I want to do that. One of, one of these days, there's so many, there's so many trips that, that I want to take. Bama Nola, we loved Alaska. It was a trip of a, Alaska was tr truly a trip of a lifetime. I was lucky to go there twice. Mm -hmm. It was truly a trip of a lifetime. Oh, uh, let me make sure I check my chat. I'm trying to go down chat real quick. Uh, Keisha, between my southern uh, big mama and my African husband, I'd eat just about anything as long as it doesn't smell bad. Right, I, and I'm not that way. I mean, I would have to learn. But again, it, that, that's one of my fears. Uh, Ross, I used to spend summers in Point Borough, Alaska, most northern point of the U.S. My aunt lives there. That would be nice. Traveling check. Welcome in. I appreciate you coming in, my friend. And I think that was my last improving the adult areas of the cruise ship. Um. That was my last last one. Look at the timing, 4.57. You know what? Thank you, Scott. I, I, Scott, controversial cruising. He made me want to be a better vlogger. He made me want to be a better uh, go live or streamer or, or person. Um, being organized. Usually I just, I, I ramble. And and I still I still ramble. But again, um, he, he made me a better, and, and that's what I'm talking about when I, I'm so glad I met Scott, but again, I'm, I'm so glad I met everybody in here. But I spend I spend more time with other people than than the others, some others. So, uh, embarkation nation, destination fun, and controversial cruising. Uh, when it comes to when it comes to talking cruising, and you know, I have uh, suggestions. Eddie, I've reached out to Eddie before as far as uh, critiquing a video and things like that, and that's I I appreciate you know people like that that you know, are willing to help. Um, you know, my number one person would be Betty because Betty has supported me from day one. Uh, I am Betty J gathers, which she'll be on live. She'll be on live tomorrow, 9 30 uh, AM. So make sure you go check out Betty J gathers and, and talk life. Um, ch check out, check out the channels and check out everybody's channel, but you, you'll find that there's certain channels that click with you that you, that you want to watch, you know, you want to see. Uh, and, and, and those, those three are, are, are to me are like must watch YouTube TV. Now you guys are watching me. You may not think the same thing, but you'll, you'll have your own channels and make sure, make sure you support those channels. Uh, Denise bone tired. I'm assuming Denise, uh, bone tired. Uh, Denise, I just subscribed to you on, um, shipmate. Uh, it, you'll see Warm Strong 313, 313 being the area code of Detroit. Uh, Warm Strong 313. So uh, accept me on Shipmate if you don't mind. I, I love Shipmate. And they were talking about it earlier. I love Shipmate because you're able to see your uh, everybody's different cruises and the things they've been on. And what they got, they were talking about, they, they, Embarkation Nation didn't realize they had cruised with controversial cruising before. And I guess they, they found them. Um, somehow on, on a video or, or some chat 
and shipmate it allows you to go back and look at the different people if they have shipmate to see who was on on that um who was on that cruise and i've i've gone through a few cruises i'm going to go through some more to see uh who i actually cruise with the only only two people i know right now that i've i've cruised with that i i didn't meet a travel travel or bust i i met them on a cruise but I'm, I'm talking about like when I go back now and look at a name that I, that I know now that I didn't know then. And uh, together we travel and see me traveling are the only two that that I know. I have, But again, I, I got a lot of cruises to go through here. Keisha, with three minutes to spare, we'll look at that. I'm five o'clock right now, so I'll be out here in a few minutes. Uh, Felicia, yeah, the smell could otherwise, yeah. At, at least... Eat, eat enough to be polite. I, I'm gonna try. Uh, Jennifer, embarkation names. Yep, yeah, Bill Scott is amazing. Love his vibe and drive. I do. I really do. And he and he keeps me focused. Uh, Controversial cruise. Appreciate you, Bill. I learn uh, much from you. Nah, you don't. I mean, again, you you don't. You 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 you. You're you're good, Scott. I, I appreciate you. And he's a guy with a lot of cruises under his belt. I I, I like I like Scott. I I like him a lot. And I I, I like uh, talking to him. He, he's a little bit younger, a lot younger. And you you can see the joy in his face when he talks about cruising. I mean, we we all talk about cruising, but you can see, like in his face, like like cruising is a is a passion. It's not like just something, you know, just YouTube and, hey, I could talk about cruising or I could talk about baseball or I could talk about this. Um, his his passion is is cruising. Uh, Betty is a, is a G and a queen. Controversial cruising, send a rough draft or something my, your way. Bone tired, traveler's cool. I sure will. Uh, hey, Will G, welcome in. Been working all day and lurking. I appreciate you lurking. And again, if you haven't already done it, if you don't mind, if you can hit the like button on the way in or the way out, I would appreciate it. Next week, Scott and I will be doing our cruise talk. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure you check us out. And again, next week at this time, Banter Bill will be will be back with a, a new topic. I appreciate I appreciate you guys coming out talking about the um, the improvement of the of the ships. Hopefully, we can see some of these come into play, and, and I, I, it would be nice. I, I, I I'd like to see a better cruising experience for everybody. Clock, I, again, I, I think I spoke to you, Clock. Mike, um, if I didn't, welcome in. You're always welcome. You know that. And I am going to get, what time is it? 5.03. I am three minutes over. But I am going to get ready to get out of here. And again, appreciate you guys coming in. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.